Numbers 20 Then the sons of Israel, the whole congregation, came to the wilderness of Zin in the first month, and the people stayed at Kadesh. And Miriam died there and was buried there. Now there was no water for the congregation, and they assembled themselves against Moses and Aaron. The people thus contended with Moses and spoke, saying, If only we had breathed our last when our brothers breathed their last before Yahweh. Why then have you brought the assembly of Yahweh into this wilderness for us and our beasts to die here? And why have you made us come up from Egypt to bring us into this evil place? It is not a place of grain or figs or vines or pomegranates, nor is there water to drink. Then Moses and Aaron came in from the presence of the assembly to the doorway of the tent of meeting and fell on their faces. Then the glory of Yahweh appeared to them, and Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Take the rod, and you and your brother Aaron assemble the congregation, and speak to the rock before their eyes, that it may yield its water. You shall thus bring forth water for them out of the rock, and let the congregation and their beast drink. So Moses took the rod from before Yahweh, just as he had commanded them. And Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly before the rock, and he said to them, Listen now, you rebels, shall we bring forth water for you out of this rock? Then Moses raised high his hand and struck the rock twice with his rod, and water came forth abundantly, and the congregation and their beasts drank. But Yahweh said to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not believe me, to treat me as holy in the sight of the sons of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. Those were the waters of Meribah, because the sons of Israel contended with Yahweh, and he proved himself holy among them. From Kadesh, Moses then sent messengers to the king of Edom. Thus your brother Israel has said, You know all the hardship that has befallen us, that our fathers went down to Egypt, and we stayed in Egypt a long time, and the Egyptians treated us and our fathers badly. So we cried out to Yahweh, and he heard our voice and sent an angel and brought us out from Egypt. Now behold, we are at Kadesh, a town on the edge of your territory. Please, let us pass through your land. We will not pass through field or through vineyard. We will not even drink water from a well. We will go along the king's highway. We will not turn to the right or to the left until we pass through your territory. Edom, however, said to him, You shall not pass through us, lest I come out to meet you with the sword. Again the sons of Israel said to him, We will go up by the highway, and if I and my livestock do drink any of your water, Then I will pay its price. Let me only pass through on my feet, nothing else. But he said, You shall not pass through. And Edom came out to meet him with a heavy force and with a strong hand. Thus Edom refused to allow Israel to pass through his territory. So Israel turned away from him. Then they set out from Kadesh and the sons of Israel. The whole congregation came to Mount Hor. And Yahweh spoke to Moses and Aaron at Mount Hor by the border of the land of Edom, saying, Aaron will be gathered to his people, for he shall not enter the land which I have given to the sons of Israel, because you rebelled against my command at the waters of Meribah. Take Aaron and his son Eleazar, and bring them up to Mount Hor. And strip Aaron of his garments, and put them on his son Eleazar. So Aaron will be gathered to his people, and will die there. So Moses did just as Yahweh had commanded, And they went up to Mount Hor in the sight of all the congregation. And Moses stripped Aaron of his garments and put them on his son Eleazar. And Aaron died there on the mountaintop. Then Moses and Eleazar came down from the mountain. So all the congregation saw that Aaron breathed his last, and all the house of Israel wept for Aaron thirty days. Psalm 58 for the choir director, Al Tasheth, of David, of Mictum. Do you indeed speak righteousness, O gods? Do you judge with equity, O sons of men? No, in heart you work unrighteousness. On earth you prepare a path for the violence of your hands. The wicked are estranged from the womb. These who speak falsehood wander in error from birth. They have venom like the venom of a serpent, like a deaf cobra that stops up its ear so that it does not hear the voice of charmers, or a skillful caster of spells. O God, shatter their teeth in their mouth. Break out the fangs of the young lions, O Yahweh. Let them flow away like water that runs off. When he aims his arrows, let them be as headless shafts. 
Let them be as a snail which melts away as it goes along, like the miscarriages of a woman which never behold the sun. Before your pots can feel the fire of thorns, he will sweep them away with a whirlwind, the living and the burning alike. The righteous will be glad when he beholds the vengeance. He will wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. And men will say, Surely there is a reward for the righteous. Surely there is a God who judges on earth. Psalm 59 For the choir director, al Tesheth of David, of Mictum, when Saul sent men, and they watched the house in order to put him to death. Deliver me from my enemies, O my God. Set me securely on high, away from those who rise up against me. Deliver me from workers of iniquity, and save me from men of bloodshed. For behold, they have lain in wait for my soul. Fierce men launch an attack against me. Not for my transgression, nor for my sin, O Yahweh. For no guilt of mine they run and set themselves against me. Arouse yourself to meet me and see. You, O Yahweh, God of hosts, the God of Israel, awake to punish all the nations. Do not be gracious to any who are treacherous in iniquity. Selah. They return at evening, they howl like a dog, and go around the city. Behold, they pour forth speech with their mouth. Swords are in their lips. For they say, Who hears? But you, O Yahweh, laugh at them. You mock all the nations. Because of his strength I will watch for you. For God is my stronghold. My God in his loving kindness will approach me. God will let me look triumphantly upon my foes. Do not slay them, or my people will forget. Make them wander about by your power, and bring them down, O Lord, our shield. On account of the sin of their mouth and the word of their lips, let them even be caught in their pride, and on account of curses and lies which they utter. Destroy them in wrath, destroy them that they may be no more, that men may know that God rules in Jacob to the ends of the earth. Selah. They return at evening, they howl like a dog, and go around the city. They wander about for food, and growl if they are not satisfied. But as for me, I shall sing of your strength, and I shall joyfully sing of your loving kindness in the morning. For you have been my stronghold, and a refuge in the day of my distress. O oh, my strength, I will sing praises to you. For God is my stronghold, the God who shows me loving kindness. Isaiah 9, beginning in verse 8. The Lord sends a message against Jacob, and it falls on Israel, and all the people know it. That is, Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, saying in lofty pride and an arrogance of heart, The bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with cut stones. The sycamores have been cut in pieces, but we will replace them with cedars. Therefore Yahweh exalts against them adversaries from resin and incites their enemies the Arameans on the east and the Philistines on the west, and they devour Israel with gaping jaws. In spite of all this, his anger does not turn back, and his hand is still stretched out. Yet the people do not turn back to him who struck them, nor do they seek Yahweh of hosts. So Yahweh cuts off head and tail from Israel, both palm and branch and bulrush in a single day. The head is the elder and the highly respected man, and the prophet who teaches falsehood is the tale. For those who guide this people are leading them astray, and those who are guided by them are brought to confusion. Therefore the Lord is not glad in their choice men, nor does he have compassion on their orphans or their widows. For every one of them is godless and an evildoer, and every mouth is speaking wicked foolishness. In spite of all this, his anger does not turn back, and his hand is still stretched out. For wickedness burns like a fire, it consumes briars and thorns, it even sets the thickets of the forest aflame, and they roll upward in a column of smoke. By the fury of Yahweh of hosts the land is burned up, and the people are like fuel for the fire. No man spares his brother. They slice off what is on the right hand, but still are hungry, and they eat what is on the left hand, but they are not satisfied. Each of them eats the flesh of his own arm. Manasseh devours Ephraim, and Ephraim Manasseh, and together they are against Judah. In spite of all this, his anger does not turn back, and his hand is still stretched out. Isaiah 10, 1-4 Woe to those who enact evil statutes, and to those who constantly record mischief. 
so as to turn the poor away from their cause, and rob the afflicted of my people of their justice, so that widows may be their spoil, and that they may plunder the orphans. Now what will you do in the day of visitation, and in the devastation which will come from afar? To whom will you flee for help, and where will you leave your glory? Nothing remains but to crouch among the captives, or fall among those killed. In spite of all this, his anger does not turn back, and his hand is still stretched out. James 3 Do not many of you become teachers, my brothers, knowing that we will receive a stricter judgment. For we all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to bridle the entire body as well. Now if we put the bits into the horse's mouth so that they will obey us, we direct their entire body as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so great and are driven by strong winds, they are still directed by a very small rudder wherever the inclination of the pilot wills. So also the tongue is a small part of the body, and yet it boasts of great things. Behold, how great a forest is set aflame by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, the very world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members as that which defiles the entire body, and sets on fire the course of our existence, and is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beasts and birds, of reptiles and creatures of the sea, is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil and full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men, who have been made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a fountain pour forth from the same opening fresh and bitter water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, produce olives, or a vine produce figs? Nor can salt water produce fresh? Who among you is wise and understanding? Let him show by his good conduct his works in the gentleness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth. This wisdom is not coming down from above, but is earthly, natural, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder in every evil practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruits, without doubting, without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace.